This is a design team project for Periwinkle Matilda. And this is the French blue kit that's available in the Etsy shop. And I just love the images. And so I wanted to do something special. So what I decided was to use one of these mailers. And what I did was take it apart around all four sides. And I just used my metal ruler and came in at the opening and just gently pried them apart. So this is just one half of the envelope. So then I had the other half to use. And I've inked that up. And so there's a lot of writing and stuff on this one. So I've just cut out a paper bag and made it the same size. And I did just rub my uh, ink pad over this uh, gently to give it a little bit of texture. And so I'll put one of these on each side of the of the cover, front and back. And so I'm going to do I'm going to sew these on, and I'm going to sew around as well. I'll probably sew around and then glue sew around these ones separately and then glue these on. But first, I'll give you the measurements. This is almost 9 by almost 12, so 11.75. So I want to make a little bit of a spine. It's very slim spine because on the inside you will have to do two separate pieces and then just hide that that spine you can come I can come right in to the crease but the actual crease itself I don't want to uh, don't want to put a put paper across there. It never bends the same. On the outside it would it's okay, but not on the inside. So I'll just put those two pieces like that. See. This can be the front. That will just go on there. And the back. So I'll just go ahead and to my sewing machine and sew these two pieces on as close as I can get to the middle. And then I will sew around the edges of these two and get those ready to glue on. So here's what I decided to do. I did pin the papers to the front and the back. And I went through both sides. So I just sewed in a zigzag around and then zigzag around here and it looks fine. I like how it turned out. I added some trim down the middle to hide the words that you could still see and then also just made it go around like that. So I have some papers from the kit, beautiful papers. This is also a page from uh, a Shakespeare book that I received from a neighbor for free and I've printed I just made my own envelope using the using cardstock and it's just folded in threes and then cut out here and here and then just folded like this and that makes a quick envelope and I want to affix this into the the journal as the middle page. I do that in my book journals that I sell. So this is my template that I use for binding my book journals. It's got five holes. I'm just going to use my awl and go through the five holes. Keep 
that together with a clip or two. So they don't get moved around too much. And I'll use the, just let me use the same system here because it's a bit bigger. I just want to make sure it's in the right place here. So there's the center. So I can take that away now. I'm using this crochet thread. It's actually a good, it's a good match to the colors, I think. So I'm taking this thread across three times. Okay, and I need a needle. So I'm just going to gently tight, tight that up, check. And I am going to put a little touch of glue on there. Just make sure everything's good. Yep, it's secure. Here we go. Shot of glue there. And I can actually glue this off. Okay, I'll just let that dry for a few minutes. And so I found this beautiful card and envelope at a thrift store and the blue just goes so nicely with this project and I just glued the card shut and you could cover that with something if you wanted to one of the words or something and I added one of the word tags and uh, Ellie had sent me these beautiful stamps it was lovely blue stamp that matches so I'm going to put those inside the envelope and I also have a cluster to put on. And this is just a piece of cardstock that was excess. And I just put some lace that I just, you know, wrapped around a little bit and put a piece of ribbon and some fabric and some thread. And so I sewed on making this little picture on here making sure that it was the same size as this backing piece. I can actually cut that down a bit. And then I added the button on there. And then I can just use my fabric tack and I'm only going to put fabric tack on the paper and not the lace or fabric because it will it comes through and then you can see the glue through it. So that's why I put the paper on the back. It makes it a little bit more solid as well and maybe I'll put that on the front of the cover and I have some pockets that come with the kit and I've folded them just made these tags using the kit so I decided to put a piece of the paper that came with the kit and had these nice images on it in the front and back cover and I sewed some lace on the side first before I glued down the page and then you can add a pocket here and so here's what it looks like so in the middle I wasn't able to use the envelope 
um, because I realized I had sewn the pages in upside down. So I had to take the envelope out, <laughs> but I can use it uh, for something else uh, in the lap book. And this, I just uh, re-sewed it and added these little dangly bits here. And I am using a little bit of the coffee dye paper kit from Periwinkle Matilda and some other papers. And then I just put a little cluster on the back here instead of a pocket and a little flower on the front here, which I make uh, using the fabric. And I have a video on that I can uh, link to that. And then I just put a ball pin and this little dangle that I made using some wire. I will put this insert into my lap book using a ribbon. So I'll just put the ribbon in the middle there. Close the insert. Grab my lap book. Just put that along the spine there. Everything's flopping around. Close that up and just secure this. And then I'll just tie it up, tie a double knot. But if someone wanted to take the papers out for any reason, they could just undo the knot. Or if they wanted to put a new one in, they could do that as well. I hope you got some inspiration. See you next time. Take care. Bye.